Well, just for fun today, and to get all your comments about how he can't change a tire right, we're gonna show you a video of changing the rear backhoe tire on the backhoe. It's had a slow leak, we've had to air it up too many times. He switched it to a used tube that was used for a quarter of a mile, a mile. It's leaking, bad stem or something. So we ordered some new tubes. Look at this awesome paint job he did also. He was able to get the right match to this by custom matching a few paints of his own, and it just looks so much better. Now this machine has a backup bell, and because of the backup bell, they have these like wafer or half size nuts, so you don't have as many threads. He went ahead and picked up some standard size from um, the Ford New Holland dealership, and we're gonna switch out all the short ones. That's where the bell fastened on. And, you know, he likes his bell, but he likes to have the full size knots too. So we always go on YouTube and order our tubes. Basically, you end up getting them uh, two for one from any of the sellers on there. They are premium service, heavy duty inner tubes. And this time we got them from a seller called TS Warehouse. I'm pretty sure we've used that guy before. We just went ahead and got two so that we have them on hand. Um, a word of caution about having tubes in your shop. Um, and I found it with uh, other ones that we've gotten from the local tire shop is the mice like to chew on them. So we stopped having extras on hand um, of anything like that. But see, this is a 16918, 18.4, uh, R28. And see right there, premium service, made in Korea. So this is what we're going to use. And this guy's working on it. So I'll just point out and save you all some comments. The first thing he's doing wrong is he doesn't have any ear or eye protection. <laughs> it doesn't have any pressure in it, just taking the... Uh -huh. See these shallow ones, they stripped them. They put too big of an impact on it. They haven't been doing anything the whole time we owned it. So They're just sitting on it. They're, they're on there, but they... Oh. They were basically working as a spacer for the mounting oh. bracket of the bell. No. So here's his bell. Mechanical bell. They're great. Yeah. The problem is it was from the factory. So they put this nut on, which is really thin. Mm -hmm. So you can, I don't know if you can see that. These are the threads. They're not. They, they were just on it. Yeah. They didn't have enough thread to hold. So the, whoever new tires on, say, 20 years ago. Yeah. So they put this one on, then you put the bracket on, and then you put a jam nut behind that, and the bell bolts to these. And the bell still works great, but this is a terrible design, so we got... Yeah. Cause, so basically we had four, so that's the problem. And the new nuts were like three something a piece, so... 385 now, so they probably... Two bucks when we bought it, but we didn't know. Yeah. Got, got all the inflation. Georgie's doing a little job for me. His dad starts looking for nuts and bolts and the whole bucket gets spilt out on the floor. Jack decided to clean off the workbench and put an entire five gallon bucket of stuff that needs to be sorted. Thank you. You're a good helper. So if your breaker bar won't do the job for you, and he's changed some tires in his time. You can use your backhoe bucket to help get the job done. Now he's had like old crusty tires on a tractor that you could drive up on it a little bit to help. Yeah, I know. He's probably doing this. Whoa, there it goes. That scares me, I hate it. I'm always afraid he's gonna damage the tire, which I'm sure people have done. Um, which reminds me, uh, we did not get the tubes off of YouTube. We got them off of eBay. We had followed a link off of YouTube to the seller uh, a long, long time ago and saved the seller. So there's that correction. And 
a rear tire is roughly $1,100 and the front tires was about $1,100 for the pair. We're buying the tube was like $34 or $36 and that is enough tread for us for what we do. We have used this backhoe since we fixed it almost every single day and it just sat here needing a little bit of fuel line attention for a long time. Okay. On a positive note, they're Goodyear tires. So they're old Goodyear tires. They're real um, durable as far as that. There's a little damage, like a cut in, a, in the sidewall and the treads are, you know, probably not what a guy running it daily in construction would do. But for this old guy and what we use, it's great. The funny thing is he had this tire off like a week ago. He went through the whole painting the rim and getting it all ready, painting the side of the backhoe, only to find that the backup tube was bad. Probably gonna need to break the bar with it. That didn't do it either, so let's try again. Just as I'm changing angles, there it went. Gotta watch Bethy's birdhouse. She repainted that for us. The family artist. So first he started with blowing air into the rim where it all meets to make sure that none of the backhoe dirt was in there. Soapy, soapy water that makes it slip. And we just use our Dawn dish soap from the house with a little container of water. He keeps that around all the time, sometimes spray bottles, but the rags are a lot faster. And then he's got multiple uh, like industrial size tire spoons or tire bars and it always takes three and it generally takes two people but he's very skilled at this that's where you come in bud i stand on one all the time or hold it so it doesn't pop back up at him ready
Yeah. Start again. Take bigger bites. I think that's what we did last time. A minute ago, we started out with a big bite. Find it. Just right. Okay, so now we're putting the tire up on blocks to create a space up above so that he can reach in there to get the old two out and get the new one in. Put these up on this side. So up till now, that's been the hard part. Here's the easy part. Was it the valve that was bad this time? No, it's a china tube. Yeah. And it's like a year old. We, another backhoe had a tire problem. We bought this, put it in it to get it. I think we already had tires ordered that came with new tubes that were better. Uh -huh. So we put this in it, I put it in on the side of the road. Got him going a couple of days or a week until the new one showed up on the truck. And we took this out and there's all these, um, like when an old tire gets cracked up, the whole tube is all cracked up and it's actually losing air into the tube. Hmm. Um, the worst two spots before I put it in here, I patched them. Yeah. But I don't think it was all of it. It's, uh, yeah, I saw it when you pulled them out. So there's spots all over in this tube. 
where it's all cracked up. Like a fracture. As, as if it was sitting outside for years. Yeah. And so, for as cheap as they are, I thought, well, it's not it's not going to get any better. Right. So we'll just put a new tube from the brand we normally get them from. We never have any trouble. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it comes with a plastic. Yep. Like keeper. Yep. So he always saves the metal ones because he prefers that, obviously. Yep. And swap it out. So he's just getting this ready to put it in. It's a lot easier to get it where you want it than try to turn it around once it's in there. So he's got it laid out in the way that he wants to slip it in. This is why you want to make sure, like in our case, um, no rough edges and what burrs on your rim because you don't want to tear your new tube trying to put it in. There you go. Voila. Now we can just take the blocks out, set it down. Back on the ground, that's easy. Okay. That's easy. So I need you to pull the blocks out. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I'm all tired out just from having to get these blocks under there for him and get them back out. I got to sit down and just watch now. This is where it's real easy to just tap on your keyboard and tell people everything that you're doing wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know this, I've never changed a tire on my own. I have him and Trey to do it for me. I'm the assistant. I know the basics of it. I know most of the names of the tools and I have the know-how. They have the strength. I do plenty enough around here without changing tires. So you just grab a bite on the rim and slip it around. And you have to work towards the tube or the stem. Uh huh. What happens is, and people do this, if you start doing what I'm doing, obviously the way that this tire goes on is you're tricking it with your drop center rim. The tire goes down in this deeper part in order to reach over this lip on the other side. So if you start over there, what happens is you get down in your drop center and people will shear their stem off because they're not paying attention. Oh. So you can see over here, the stem comes out the drop center. Yeah. So they're going around and going around and they'll ruin that because this tire right here is going to end up down in here where that is in there. So that happens. So, so the tire puts pressure on the stem. They'll shear it right and off. It'll ruin the... So you do have to put the tire back on the right way right now. Or you're going to have a bad day. So what I'll do now... We don't have bad days around here. We have hiccups and happy accidents. And then i got to take this out because i got to start working yep. towards that. Now I'll just use these in teams. And you can't pinch your tube, but this one's way down in. Mm -hmm. Not even close. I'm over here holding this one. This will be about the last bite I can get on this side before I have to come over and work over there. Yeah, so. so, 
this would be easier with a newer tire and this is an old tire and yeah. the tire shop would say no we can't do this your tire is too old maybe on this they could because it's off-road yeah but this is very stiff we, we had a hard time getting it off way more than it would be if it was a new tire. but we found with like um truck tires or old vehicle tires the tire shop just says no we can't do it because they don't want the liability um you know with old tires and they probably really prefer to sell you new ones at eleven hundred dollars I would see why I take that one out almost there now we might have a little trouble is that now sometimes you gotta hammer them at the end but this might go one more no nope. see right there yep see what people, they shear yeah. that right off so we were actually pretty rough on that right there. Yeah. So that's one side. Now we have to flip it over and it's a dual person job. So we'll be right back. So he said we were a little rough on the stem, but he checked it out. Everything's good. So we've got the tire filler. These um, heavy tire fillers are really good because you can just set it right on it and walk away to do whatever it is you need to do. And in his case, it's him cleaning up because I haven't had any protein to get me going today. So he's put a little dab of grease from his grease gun on all his studs. And I asked him why he wasn't using the anti-seize that he normally uses. And he said that for the amount of money of the anti-seize, the grease is lasting longer than the anti-seize. So for less money and that it's working, that's what he's gonna use. So you can see he's got all his new lug nuts on there. We spent like $30 at the So let us know in the comments below whether you like the grease over the anti-seize or the anti-seize over the grease and under what application purpose because I'm always interested in knowing what you like and what works because like with my maple syrup um, parts and oh, especially my honey uh, extractor, I had to use a Loctite because those little nuts and bolts just kept getting over and over again. And then I found out there's a difference between Loctite and blue Loctite. So, which one of those do you prefer? It's always dependent on the application you're using it in. So that's the heavy duty tire changing job, everybody. Thanks for watching. Remember to leave a comment below. We always like to read those and we like to hear all the heckles of how bad of a job we did. So, until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.